Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Kyle Griffin, and welcome to my very first 3D Studio Max tutorial. And I'm going to go ahead and say, it's probably going to be my best one. Now, first off, what we're going to do today is, uh, I've been thinking about doing 3D Studio Max tutorials for a while, and uh, I just couldn't bring myself to do straight beginner tutorials. Uh, there are plenty out there, and um, I just didn't want to fall in with the rest. But, I'm sure you can find some that will get you up to date, and as we go throughout these tutorials, we will be um, doing some more advanced things, and we'll also be getting going through all the beginner stuff as well. So I'm going to try to incorporate both audiences. Even if you never, even if this is your first time opening up this program, I'd like for you to be able to pick up and follow me along. Um, or if you're a pro, then you can follow me along, even if it's just to laugh at my mistakes. Now. What we're going to do today is we're going to create a simulation where we have bullets that bust through a wall. Now, what we're going to be using is uh, a renderer called V-Ray. So we'll go to our render setup and we'll scroll down to assign renderer and we'll use V-Ray. Now, if you don't have V-Ray, it is an external plugin, external renderer, renderer, but it should work with any other renderer that you have. So don't worry, you'll be able to follow along. But we're also going to be using another plugin called Rayfire. <clears throat> and Rayfire is an amazing plugin. You can get it off their website, a demo f off their website, and you can buy it for just under $300. So here we have Rayfire. We're going to be using Rayfire, but we're going to first set up our scene. So we're going to create a box, make it kind of large, but the size doesn't really matter that much. I'm going to press W on our keyboard. And we'll go to our X and Y coordinates and just zero them all out. So the center's our floor. So let's go ahead and rename it to floor. Now, I don't really like this color, so let's change the color to like a, a gray, grayish color. That's better. Nothing against pink, I just, uh, I don't really like it that much. Now, also we're going to create another box, and this is going to be our wall. So we want to make this one kind of thin and pretty tall. <coughs> and it looks like we're going with the reds today. Let's make another gray. <coughs> so we got two gray walls. So let's also uh, center this one up. So let's just zero everything out. And uh, then we can push it back. Oops. And then we just... Where'd you go? Come here. Oh, that's a problem with using gray. Uh, it blends with everything. So we'll just push that back. So now we got everything centered and it looks all neat. And uh, we're going to rename this box to wall. Now, we're going to go ahead and create a sphere. These are going to act, actually, let's just go ahead and uh, do some modeling. Uh, let's create a cylinder. And the size doesn't matter because we're going to adjust that in a minute. And the radius to about uh, 4 the height to about, uh, let's say, 9. That's 5. No, oh, wait, 9. Uh, maybe the radius down is about 2. Let's see how that looks. Let's zoom in here. I'm just scrolling on the middle mouse click. And also, if you hold down Alt and middle mouse button, you can uh, zoom around like this. So that looks pretty good. Let's also increase increase the height segments uh, to about 20. And if we press F4 on the keyboard, we can see what we're actually looking at. So now what we want to do is right click on our cylinder and convert it to editable polygon. And we'll go to our polygon selection and click the very top one and just delete it. And we'll go to our border selection, click the very top border, press R on our keyboard, and just scale it down until the point closes. Now we'll press W on our keyboard and scale it up. And then we could do some, some more modeling here, uh, kind of round off this point and uh, make it look a little bit better, but uh, we're not going to for this tutorial. It's fine, just the way it is. Um, so there's our bullet, so we'll go ahead and rename it from cylinder 001 to bullet. And now what we're going to do is we're going to animate this bullet. So let's press uh, W click in here and just rotate it. Oh, whoops. I'm still in the editable polygon thing. So let's just uh, click out of that. So now 
we'll press uh, W, and we'll rotate it. And if we go over here, we can just rotate it 90 degrees upon the X axis. Now we'll press, <coughs> sorry guys, press W again, and it's actually E for rotate, not W, sorry I messed up. I don't know where they got these keys from, because they really don't make much sense. Uh, and now what I want to do is, so that I can see our objects better, let's click on the box, go to the Modify tab, and uh, make it black. And also do that for the floor, make it black. And now we can go into our Material tabs and just apply a gray solid gray material to both of them. Where is there it is. So that way the outline of it is black so we can see it a little bit better. But the material is actually still gray. <coughs> Should have done it earlier, but just a little quick tip. Uh, we can change this to any color we want. So if we wanted it to be uh, yellow could be yellow. Let's actually just keep them both yellow. It'd be easier to click on. Whew been a long day guys, long day. So there we go. So we've got a bullet here. And what we do is we animate it to go through our wall. So let's just uh, click on the auto key button or we can press N on our keyboard. Turn on and off there. And we'll move forward about uh, 15 frames, half a second, and just go through the wall. So uh, let's see, press N again. That's Nicholas, by the way. If you just can't understand what I'm saying. <coughs> and uh, let's see what we have here. Is that bullet flying backwards? No, it's not. It looked weird though. So we've got a bullet flying through our wall. Alright, so that looks, uh, looks pretty good. And uh, keep in mind this is not to scale in any means. So uh, now what we want to do is we're going to start to go to the fun stuff. So we go into our create panel, under standard primitives, click that box, and go to ray fire, and open the ray fire floater by clicking on ray fire and then open ray fire floater. So we want to take our wall and add it to the dynamic impact objects. And we want to take our bullet and add it to our static kinematic objects along with our floor. If we didn't add our floor, then everything would just fall through the world. And uh, we'll go into the fragmentation. Actually, let's click on our wall again, go to the Modify tab, and change the length, the width, and height segments to about uh, 10, 10, and uh, 5, or 10. That looks pretty good to me. And do the same for our floor, maybe 15, 15, and 15. And we can probably increase these. Okay, so we'll go into our um, wall, and uh, on the iterations, about 200, and fragments impact objects. So that's going to fragment our wall a good bit, and uh, we can also click on one of these and fragment it some more if we wanted, but uh, for this tutorial, it's fine just the way it is. So now we're going to go into the physics tab, and we're going to go and see what we have here. So just press play. And it'll load for a second, and uh, the bullet's going to fly through. And wow, that must be a pretty powerful bullet to do all that to the wall. And it's basically just destroying the entire wall, which isn't exactly what I want. I mean, that's kind of cool, but uh, it's not really what I'm looking for. What I want is the wall to break apart, but I don't want it all to fall to pieces like that. So what we have to do is go into our objects panel, and click all these wall fragments, just uh, click the first one, hold down shift, and click the last one, and send to sleeping list. That'll put them all to sleep. And now what we can do is we can go back to the physics tab, and we can press play, and it'll render out. And now when our bullet smashes through, it still kind of blows them up. So, let's, uh, oh yeah, I forgot, my bad guys. So we'll go into our sleeping, our sleeping objects tab, and we'll click dead objects. So click, tick that right there. And now we'll go back into physics and try it again. <coughs> so now a bullet goes through and just smashes through a little piece. And, uh, oh, look at that. Got a little piece uh, spazzing out there. 
So now, why is this useful? Say, for instance, you have ten of these. Excuse me. Ugh. Go to our orthopathic group uh, view by pressing U, so I can zoom around a little bit more. All right. And uh, let's see. Let's say we have about ten of those bullets that are flying through. We don't want one bullet to destroy the entire wall before the other bullets get to the wall, right? So if we just make them sleeping, they will act a little bit better. Press F4 to get rid of all these lines. Oh, that's so much better. And, um, so, yeah. Well, that's pretty much the idea of this tutorial. But we're, I'm also going to create another one. So if you hold down, you press W, and you hold down Shift, you can create another. I want to do a copy of it. And let's, uh, animate this one as well. It should be the exact same animation, but let's offset it a little bit. Let's move this bullet. They're still creating a lot, but the problem, the reason is, is that our, our pieces are so big that um, a, it's just messing up. So, don't worry about that. Alright, so uh, let's just uh, do a little bit of auto keying. Um, press auto key, you press in, move back, and uh, set key. It's about right here. Forward. And uh, set another key about right there. Snare bullets uh, go through the wall at different times. And we'll, all we have to do is simply just go back into our objects panel and go up to our static kinematic objects and add our second bullet. Go back to the physics. And uh, we just bake it. So let's see how that looks once we have a second bullet. Smash it through. First bullet goes through, second bullet. They're making pretty impressive impact. <coughs> so that's pretty much what we want. Uh, in the next tutorial, I think that I'm going to do uh, some procedural crumbling, uh, which is really cool and it's super easy to do. We'll also be using Rayfire for that as well, um, but hopefully this is a pretty good look at what Rayfire can do. Uh, actually, before we leave, let's uh, go ahead and set up our scene and render out a frame. So, uh, you know it would be cool if we had glass bullets. Oh, that's what we're going to do. So let's uh, go into our Create panel, go to our Lights, and go down to V-Ray. Now we'll make a V-Ray light, and I just want to put it, uh, let's see, right above our wall. Kind of above each of these. So we'll press uh, create it, press W, and just raise it up. And uh, it's going to light up our scene there pretty nicely. Looks good. And uh, probably bring it up a little bit, a little over right here. Oh yeah, look at that. And uh, hold down Shift and make another one. No, cancel that. We want to make another light, not another floor. So just make another light and uh, make a copy of it and uh, go into our modify tab and change this one to kind of a peachy color and change the multiplier down to about 20 and for this one change it to a bluish color set the modifier down to about 20 as well so now we render this out press shift Q and we've got um, a pretty nice render of um, different lights and it makes it look a little bit cooler especially using V-Ray. We'll probably put a light back here and broadcast some light through it. Uh, so let's go ahead and create that glass material. Glass is so easy using V-Ray it's not even funny. So let's go into create a V-Ray material by clicking standard and going to V-Ray. In our reflect panel uh, let's do 232, 232, 232, 232. Okay. Now we're going to press this uh, background so we can see it, and it's already pretty much glass. Go to our reflect, refract, and make it all white. And there you have it. That's a very simple glass material that works pretty well. And we'll just apply this to each of our bullets, and now they disappear, but uh, we can press F4, and there they are. So let's press Shift Q to render. And uh, I accidentally applied it to everything. So, whew, let's get that back. I just want to apply it to our bullets. Let's make sure we got it looking right. What did I do wrong? Oh, I got some pieces that are glass, pieces that aren't glass. 
I'll just press Control Z a lot. When in doubt, Control Z. Okay, so uh, let's re. You know what? Our lights are fine the way they are. Yeah, it looks pretty good. <coughs> so let's recreate the glass material <laughs> since uh, I messed up. And so there's our scene. We have two bullets frozen in the air right here. And we've got this wall breaking apart. And I hope this is a really good introduction to V-Ray. And if you like these tutorials, please subscribe um, and let me know how I did. Um, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.